Today's video is a first look at the images shot for the Typox Samira Z5 1.4 for Leica M-Out. Hello, welcome, Matt here from MrLeica.com. After around a two hour flight flying from London to Valencia in Spain, I landed and I was ready to start testing as soon as I hit the floor. That said, it was late, so I took a few photos on the way to the apartment and then it was ready for lights out. Starting fresh on day one, the first thing to do is explore the apartment. So I headed to the rooftop terrace to have a look around and see what this lens could do. The first thing I noticed is it does seem good and sharp enough, wide open at 1.4, and then as you stop the lens down, like with most lenses, the image quality does improve. I will do a part two video, which will hopefully be out in the next two or three days, which will be a normal kind of deep dive geek video, showing all the characteristics of the lens and how it compares to similar 35mm lenses. So feel free to subscribe to see that. If you've seen this channel before, you know that I normally use a like a SL camera, and after recently moving to the M10, the first thing I had to get used to was starting to use neutral density ND filters again. So as you can see, you've got an ND filter on the lens because I'm shooting at 4,000th of a second, and it was still too bright, wide open at 1.4. The other problem I had was this lens does flare when shooting towards the light, despite what other reviews have said. Uh, this I've done some serious testing, and I can 100% confirm that this lens does flare, and you will see it throughout this video. As a result, I needed to get some pictures, so I had to swap to the Leica Simlux 51.4 for a few photos for this model, just to make sure we got the shots. Also, it's a nice way to compare. This is how the 51.4 looks compared to the 35 1.4 photos you'll see for the rest of this video. As you can see, I had the lens hood on, but when you're shooting in low light, the sun still kind of misses the hood, so the hood doesn't really help. So I did try using the hood, but for the most part of this video, I ended up taking it off to make it a smaller, lighter setup. We headed out into the street to look for some light, and this is me shooting with Claudia again. And yeah, I, was, I normally shoot models backlit, and so that can be a bit of a problem when shooting a range front of camera such as the M10 and with the lens that flares. So I had to kind of change up my setup a little. You may also notice in some of these photos that I think I've got a problem with my shutter at 4,000th of a second. There's a little black mark at the edge of the frame. Next, it was time to do a bit of street photography with the Typox Samira 35 1.4 and make the most of the amazing low light you get in Valencia in the evenings on a sunny day. So I kind of headed out looking for light and one thing I'd say for this lens, it is bigger than many small lenses I use for street photography. So normally I'd use a lens probably half the size of the Typox lens, but they normally say a slower lens, say a 35 f2 for example. I will compare to alternative lenses in the part two video with side by side size comparisons and image comparisons. That said, you can get very nice image quality and nice subject background separation if you get close enough to your subject. That's less useful for portraits because you will get distortion, but for street photography and say objects in, in a scene, if you get close, you'll get some nice kind of separation and uh, fall off as you can see in some of those photos. If you're wondering about the colours from this lens, all the photos in this video are edited with my Leica M10 new preset pack that I'm currently working on. And so it's not a true representation of the colours, but in part two, I will share raw and edited files. So you get a real idea of what this lens looks like and kind of the contrast and the tones and things like that. I was very pleased with the image quality I was receiving from this lens. I have used more expensive lenses and cheaper lenses. So to name a few lenses like the like a Sumlux that many of you may be thinking, how does it compare to? Some reviewers have said it's slightly softer than the Sumlux and slightly softer than the Zeiss Distagon 35 1.4. But as someone that has owned the Voigtlander Nocturne 35 1.4, I would say it's definitely sharper and more corrected and maybe more modern looking than the Nocturne, uh, but it is twice the size. So it's one of those things you need to weigh up. I was literally shooting this lens from first light till dark every day for four days to see what it can do in as many different conditions as possible. Here you can see me shooting in the last of the light on the rooftop and then it's time for an early start the next morning. After seeing forecasts for blue skies, the plan was to walk around 40 minutes to the City of Arts in Valencia, take photos as I went along the streets before it got light and then get there before the birds woke up <laughs> to catch the sunrise coming up over the City of Arts buildings. As you can see, the colours are fantastic from this lens, and so I pretty much had the place myself. There was me and a few runners, and that was pretty much it at that time in the morning. 
I took the opportunity to do some of my usual lens testing and as you'll see in part two, the sun stars from this lens are fantastic. The Typox mirror lens is quite unusual in that it has 14 rounded aperture blades which make fantastic portraits but also really nice bokeh if you get close enough to your subject. For these photos however, because it was sunny, I was shooting pretty much all at f8 and stopping down even more if I wanted like prettier sun stars. If you ever plan to visit Valencia in Spain, I highly, highly recommend visiting the City of Arts, especially if you love street photography. It is an absolute street photographer's dream. The, the, the light and the, the lines and the contrast and the shapes, it's just an absolute pleasure. Even for someone who's more of a model photographer, portrait photographer, I had so much fun doing street photography. And I think it was on day two where I started to settle in with a thid 5mm focal length. I'm sure many of you would argue that if you could only have one lens for your, say, like a camera to do everything, then perhaps the third 5mm focal length would be the best lens to do all types of photography. That being said, some of us prefer, say, wider lenses such as 28mm and others prefer a tighter crop such as 50mm. Let us know below the comments what you prefer. You're a 50mm guy or 35 I guess you're a 35 if you're watching this video. As you can see, once you get the hang of the 35mm width, it can be very rewarding if you have like enough space to work in and it's not too tight so you don't feel like you're you're cropping in too closely. With the City of Arts it's such a big place that you can walk up to things to get closer if you need to and also back up if you want a bit more in your scene as you can see from some of these photos. My next plan was to try and get high to get a different vantage point and then look down and I was rewarded by that little person walking on the path. As I looked around there was pretty much photo opportunities in all directions. As someone that often complains about the short winter days and lack of light, I have to say that winter is better for light for street photography because you get the low sun and those long rewarding shadows. So I think Valencia in particular, places where you've got sunshine during the winter months is especially good for street photography because you get, as I say, the long shadows and lots of light to play that you can work with. This is slightly different in London because it's normally grey and so there's no light and so there's no light to work with and so you have to change up your setup slightly. As you can see from my big grin I think I was way too happy from either too much light exposure or lack of food so it's time to head back to the city and get some breakfast. I'd already been out for about five hours and it's roughly an hour walking back through the nice park so I know I'll be taking more photos on the way back. Now I was also testing other lenses such as the Voigtlander Ultron 35mm f2 and my like M240 so in the part 2 video I'll share results also with the M240 so you can see if there's any difference to the M10 and then also how the photos compare with similar 35mm fast-ish lenses 35 1.4, 35f2 etc. After a quick break for lunch it was time to meet up with Yana for some model of photography, a model that I know from our previous visit. So as you can see me here in action this is similar to the videos I share on Patreon if you're into model of photography I normally talk about lighting, posing and things like that. As I say, I'm normally a 50mm guy, so I was interested to see what I could do with a 35mm lens. As always, a huge thanks to my amazing patrons. I will share some of these behind the scenes full videos on Patreon when I get a chance. As you can see from the lighting on us face in some of those rooftop photos, we were running out of sunlight really quick. We did these few photos inside and then we said we'd meet again the next morning. <laughs> 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 As you can see, photography doesn't need to be boring and model photography is often a lot of fun. Now, back to the serious point of the lens. As you can see, I'm doing my usual thing of shooting towards the light and again I'm having the problem with the flare. You can see if I'm using my hand, I can get good photos or usable photos, but it is, it is a bit of a pain having to use your hand to protect the lens from flare. I could see this guy watching us, so I framed him up as part of the shot and then got closer for the usual types of portraits. Back to the lens flare, for normal types of photography when you're not pointing the lens directly at the sun, you shouldn't really have any problems when it comes to flare. You might get a little bit if you're shooting like sun star type photos. This is a multi-coated lens like most modern lenses so you don't really need the lens hood and without the lens hood you're saving a bit of weight and a bit of size as mentioned and it stops the lens being so front heavy. The camera will balance without falling forward without the lens hood attached. It's also worth mentioning that you can use flare as like a creative advantage. Some lenses with zero flare can maybe be a bit too boring and a bit too well corrected. So it's just learning the capabilities of the lens that you're using and then using them to your advantage. 
And one big advantage of this lens is it will focus to 0.45 meters. And so that's really good for say food shots or if you want to get that extra subject background separation. It's then time to do some night photos. I think photographers that enjoy shooting at night are going to love this lens because it is sharp enough wide open at 1.4 and I'd say it's a lot sharper than the Nocturne Classic Thid 5 1.4. All these night photos were shot to wide open at 1.4 and that allowed me to keep my ISO probably below 3200 or 3200 max. Before I knew it, it was day four and the sun had gone behind the clouds. I agreed to meet up with Claudia again and we met at the City of Arts to see what I could do in kind of more flat light conditions. I'm sure some people prefer flat light for portraits, but give me sunshine any day. Here you can see me loading up some more film in the Leica M4P. I did shoot film with the Typox Samara 35 1.4, but I've not yet developed it. If you follow me on social media, I will share my results as soon as I develop my own film. Another lens I was interested to test was the Light Lens Lab 35mm f2 8 element uh, collapsible LTM. So I was using that for some photos when I was doing photos of the Typox lens. Again, I'll share the results in part two. Okay, back to the 35mm Samara photos. So I did a few in colour to see how the concrete looked in colour with a preset added. And then by that point, <laughs> my battery died in my like M10. Don't laugh like M240 users. So I stopped for a coffee to recharge myself and uh, charge up the battery with the M10. So I then had two batteries for the afternoon. It was then back out into the flat light and I had to work a bit hard for my photos this time. I'm not as good in flat light, so I was walking around shooting anything and everything to try and make photos from no, no, no light, basically. Every so often a little glimpse of sun poked its head through the clouds, and so I managed to get some of these photos. I just, I was just starting to see things differently, and that allowed me to work in the kind of the more boring lighting, if that makes sense. These photos you can see a shot with the Ultron. I was switching between some lenses to, to try to get a feel of what the different lenses can do. I think you probably can get some results if you shoot f8 with any lens, but yeah, here are a few examples with the Ultron. I also had small 28mm lenses with me as well. I had the Almeret, as you can see on the M10, and the little white Landless Scope R28 2.8. After seeing the photos shared in this video, are you one step closer to buying the Typox Samara 35 f1.4 lens for Leica? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see part two. For all you pixel peepers, part two is coming up and that's going to be more of a deep dive in exactly what you're going to get from this lens.